And here we are in scenic Tucson, Arizona, nestled in the foothills of the various mountains that create a valley the city sits in. These are the NJCAA Men's Division II National Championships. It's the national title game. It's Morton, it's Prairie State, two teams separated by very small distance in the Chicago area come to meet each other here today in State 48. Hello everybody, Peyton Gallagher, Ryan Sakura on the call and what this promises to be is an improbable match, but one that we salivate over up here in the booth at Keno Sports Complex. Yeah, I mean, how about that? Two teams coming all the way from Chicago just to meet out here. You wouldn't have had it, well, you would have had it a lot differently, but it's four and it's 11. That's pretty crazy. Two teams come from the same place. Two teams that aren't seated to be here, but they are. Prairie State has gone on a wonderful, miraculous upset run to get here. Morton. Not as many upsets, but just as miraculous. They keep fighting off every single time. It's a matchup that has potential to be really tight, really tense, really tactical, based solely on the fact that these teams have seen each other twice already this year, and that's kind of the beautiful thing about it is this game has a lot at its plate simply because everybody's seen everybody, everybody knows every player on either side, and it's kind of just a battle of, a battle of the minds in a lot of ways. Two teams coming out of the same conference, Two teams that, as you said, Ryan, met each other twice in the regular season. Two very different fixtures. A 4-3 result in favor of Morton in the regular season. 2-1 late winner. Morton's made a habit of that in extra time in the conference championship game as we're introduced to these two great teams here today. Why not being announced now? Who are the players that stand out to you? Let's start with Prairie State. Prairie State, I mean, hard to look past like Buku Joffrey. He's been awesome. It's been big, physical, towering, been really great to watch. Just this huge presence up top. Other guys around him. I really liked Igor Muryaliyevic, the goalkeeper. Sturdy, strong, safe, safe hands. Muntan Thuong is my type of fullback. Really good, really industrious, gets forward, but also sturdy at the back. Dylan Hawley, I didn't get a chance to see him. By all accounts, he was fantastic in this tournament. He's a big miss. Jose Rico, who slotted in the winning penalty yesterday, has been absent at times for Prairie State, but when he's on, he is very, very on. Those are the guys, and I mean, it all runs through Agbuku Joffrey. He's such a presence to deal with out there. They play through him. It's perfect to see a system revolve around a big towering figure like that. Let's take a look at the team that will have to deal with the Buka. This Morton College team defiantly has found a way into this final. They've only led Ryan for 50 minutes in this entire tournament. It's been a remarkable run from them. It's been Morton magic the whole way. Who've been the men making it happen? <laughs> How about Luis Escalante yesterday? What a winner that was. It teed up well for him. He struck it even better. He's the first one. I've liked Gabriel Moreira, their goalkeeper, in quick spurts. Mateus Akuma, really, really fun. The guy who scored the goal that was ending up being the difference in the 1-1 that level it, Mateus Milani. He's going to be huge because he's the only guy that can really run man for man, step for step, size for size with Akbuku in this tournament. For my money, they're both perfectly placed. They're fantastic. I mean, beyond that, you start to look at other guys that have been in and out of spurts, draw Rosito, when he's on, there might not be a better player in the field that's certainly left, but sparsely on, and that's kind of the big one. If you can get Rosito going, big player, smile on his face, he's fantastic. And it was Rosito's ball after an up and down performance against CCBC Essex that did fall to the head of Milani to level the game up in the 85th minute one watt. Teams being introduced now. Final hellos between two familiar foes. Far from friendly. Sides are led by Carlos Reyes and Juan Franco. Morton, the number four seed, the number 11 seeded. Prairie State Pioneers, who in the group stage knocked off the number two seed, Jones Community College, and one up themselves by knocking off number one, Phoenix College, last night. We're just about ready. Just about ready for this one. National Anthem coming up. This mouth-watering prospects of a final in these NJCAA Men's Division II National Championships. And there's been a rip-roaring tournament. Taking a long road to get here. And it is only moments away from reaching its destination. And now, time for the National Anthem. And then we go. 
So Warriors take the field. This little patch of grass will be the point of confrontation between these two sides that have made this long journey here. Two campuses separated by only 48 minutes of distance and 36 miles. Come down to Tucson. Nose to nose, eye to eye with a chance at a national title on the line. Ryan, what's going through these two huddles? We've been here. We've done that. Not necessarily in this environment, but against these two teams, the familiarity is so true. And it's all that matters in this game in a lot of ways. Yes, there's bigger stakes. Yes, there's heightened environment. Yes, it's a new field, a new location where they've never met before. But I know every single player that's going to look across me at that pitch. I know every single player that's going to be next to me on this pitch with me. And it's, simply put, a game that you will expect to know what's expected of you and to know what's expected for your opponent. You know what you're getting yourself into, even if the environment and the area is unfamiliar. Both teams should be confident, comfortable, and calm in these kinds of spaces. Again, the familiarity is everything. Morton breaking from their embrace. The first thing they see, the big towering frame of Buku Joffrey as he is in the center circle. The ball at his feet, he will send this in motion. Cloud speckled sky here in Tucson. 26 hours the distance between Chicago and this fair city old Pueblo. The battle commences now. They come to grips. Prairie State and Morton. The national championship on the NJCAA network. What is the formula to stop Agbuku Joffrey? I mean, box him. Find a way to press him. And I think Phoenix College did a good job of it yesterday. Despite the defeat, they were counter-pressing and putting four or five guys on him. Not in a literal sense, but almost in a kind of aerial space sense. They were just not allowing him any sort of room to turn. It was when Phoenix College started to push numbers forward, that's where they got in trouble. When they gave him the space to operate on the counter and be a presence one-on-one, -on -one, that's when they started to struggle. If you can not allow him to get going, you'll have a lot of success. Really good job early on formation-wise from Prairie Straits sitting tight in 4-1-4-1. Duarte patrolling, or Dutra patrolling and dropping off. And again, that line of confrontation will be so key today, just as it was against PC. Silverio. Provided two of the goals so far for Morton in this tournament. Dutra doing what he does though, just sweeping up. Abuku on the back heel flick. Makila. He shows his tidy touches and is able to keep the ball for his side. The midfield battle 
poses particular intrigue. It'll be a lot to do with Luis Escalante and what spaces he decides to take up in the white jerseys of Morton today and who follows him. Does Dutra follow him? Does Makila drop in and follow him? It's, it's all about that. It's about finding which guy is going to mark Luis Escalante and pick him out in the play. Ruffling wind picking up. You would say that the points of the most quality on either side or in that midfield area and maybe in goal as well. Yeah, I think in terms of both goalkeepers, certainly they have advantages. I mean, look at what Morjaljevic has done so far this tournament. He's been stout. He's been stalwart. He's been saving their butt half the time with some of the great saves he's been able to make. Morera on the other side is just as impressive in a lot of ways. Morera stands watching his goal as... Rosito intercepts. Silverio trying to glance it forward. Wrap his foot around it. Somewhat pacified start so far. No real feeling out period between these two teams who know each other very well. It's, it's tame though at the same time. There's two different ways you can have a tame start. It's both teams feeling each other out or it's both teams going the distance and understanding this is what we have to do. It's a lot of consistent, solid possession, which is exciting to watch because that's both teams knowing what their style of this game is going to be, comfortable with the way this game is going to be played out on each side. Everybody knows where they want to be and how they want to do it. Dutra, who's got two goals in his own right in this tournament, gives away here. Silverio still coming. Somehow still on the ball. Gujiri didn't like that very much. You talk to some of the staffers on site for Morton, and yes, these two teams play in the same conference, and they often see each other, but a lot of these players have played together at different stretches coming up throughout the club and school ranks, and that hatred, that territorial rivalry, isn't necessarily what you might think it would be. Yeah, it's, it's different for some players, for some groups and regions there is that rivalry you look at Pima and Phoenix there is a very clear and almost boiling hatred at times between the two programs trying to one-up each other consistently but for these two teams Chicago is such a small soccer environment in a lot of ways that all the good players wind up at the same three or four or five different clubs meaning you're going to inevitably see everybody once or twice on this pitch. You're inevitably going to be playing with some of them at the DA camps and ID camps and figuring out, hey, this is this guy. He plays for this club, but with on this game, he's on my team. Pickup games, too. Another great way to find it out. Other guys in and around you make good friends. They'll be aware of each other. They'll be friends with each other. But also, as soon as that first shove comes in, there won't be any fear to shove back. When both teams are reaching for such a lofty prize, Destined to come together and sparks will fly when they do. Milani. Rosito connecting based on the first advance. And now Rosito struggling to win it back. Now some of that Cajun is coming in. Area is tightening. Sanchez in front of Mazzario. Cross in. Marrera. Pinned up in goal as Pedro Milani ushers away. Five minutes in. The service out wide is also going to be crucial. I mean, that's where Prairie State wants to make most of their attacking verve. They want to try and find the spaces away from the center of the pitch and attempt to get the bottom on Thuong, Thuong and get him around the areas. Akbuka used him as a target man only at the end. That'd be ideal. Despite this guy here. Mayo Graf stepping in big role. Dylan Holly out. They had to shuffle around that back line. Julian Martinez stepping in as a center half. And Graf played excellently against Phoenix College. He did. not he was almost, it felt like he had been used to playing in those roles as well. Makila splitting open. Makila's shot is a tame one. Pedro Milani doing enough to put him off. Incisive run though and really nice passage of play brewing here for the Pioneers. Morton have been slow starters in a lot of ways in this tournament. They've had to grind their way through, which is something to be said that I think they're okay with the way this game has gone. I think Prairie State much more comfortable. The two three the two best opportunities of the game so far and 
Morton won't feel any sort of pressure beyond that. Let's start to fetten the fascination with this one because it is two opposite teams in so many ways. Prairie State, they scored first in every game they played in this tournament. Mm. So far, the opposite for Morton. They found a way to get a lead late in the first half against Pima and led for 50 minutes in that one, but their other two matches played so far in this tournament, they found a way to come back, level, and then win an extra time. Which is unique because Morton is a proactive, open, spacious team that can't find a way to get a lead first, and Prairie State very much a reserved, defensive, reactive team that almost has always been the proactive team that's getting the first goal. Rosito trying to flip that script though, charges in and wins a corner. Of course, this set-piece defense, well bolstered. Token name of the Iron Dome. Rick Buku Joffrey, who just patrols around the area and finds a way to get a piece of everything that comes near him. Large fella. Large fella. Well said. Marijovic flying in. Maurice Mendes, first to it, though. Bumama, who sparkled in the last couple matches. Bashir Bumama rolls off the tongue. There's a strong contingent of Morton fans that have made the journey down. Again, those 26 hours by car. And Buka twisting. He has great control of his body. It's at six foot six, perhaps pretty hard to have a control over yourself like that, but he is so perfect at the way that he's able to just kind of get down low, bend, twist, turn, and it adds to his skill level. Blushing ball forward, Rosito. Buku forced to watch it go over his hat. Now for a throw. Morton starting to ask some questions themselves. Bumama, who always loves to hit a long shot, bounces one wide of the target. Not sure if it was a shot or a cross, but played into a good area regardless. He's clean on the ball, Bashir Bumama. He is every bit the kind of perfect mix of antsy, where you don't know whether he knows where he's going with the ball. He's got that little kind of creativeness about him where it's like, okay, what's he do? He's got a bounce to him when he has the ball at him, right? It's, it's, it's spurts where it's just like he'll sit on it, he'll sit on it, and then he'll break. And then he has moments where he's just so, so, so composed and so calm as well. Great striker of the ball as well. Very, very clean. And you're seeing that a lot with the kids on these teams and at these levels. We saw Ethan Hackenberg last night for CCBC. Great service on him. The CCBC, that CCBC team had a ton of talented, talented players. And speaks a lot to what Morton was able to do in the late night game and overcome them. Also a ton of consonants in their title. CC, BC, Essex Knights. There we have it. No foul here. Egbuku. Bumama unafraid. Trying to get it back. Bumama still with it. You have to love this from Bashir Bumama just going right in and taking it off the big man. Joffrey well back trying to Aid in the defensive effort. Reisman D's good cover from him. And now some bumps and scrapes. Foul given. Melissa Back is our center official. Keaton Jarvis, Clarence Clark. They are and then. Cornelius Mercea is the fourth. Clarence Clark doing a good job flagging down that foul. Another set piece for Morton, who made good on a couple throughout the course of this tournament. Milani sneaking in, but he's offside. Those are the good moments for Prairie State when you can see out a stretch and just continue to sit and hunker and then get away with it. This is not going to be a box-to-box -box type of match, but what it will be is a match in which each team, when they do have the ball, will have extended runs of possession and probe the other team's area. 
So it'll be a very patient performing match. And I think that's kind of the direct contrast to what we just saw in the women's game. And that game was so open, so wide. And usually the, the misinterpretation of wide open box to box, mat box to box matches is that teams will dominate. And it'll be, or a team, it'll be a high scoring close game wasn't the case in the last one. More often than not, it is. When there's a wide open game, there's usually a team that's much more suited to it, and they end up pulling away. This one, when both teams are close and tight, it enables a much closer game in, in actuality. I do have to like that both teams seem to be going for it, though. No intention to sit in. Miserial takes it over the line, and that formula worked well for Carlos Reyes getting here, beating Phoenix College. Truly an inspired anti-football type performance. Yeah, but at the same time, when they had the ball, they kept it just True. as they're doing now. So it was, it was kind of half anti-football. It was kind of half Mourinho and maybe full Mourinho in a lot of ways because anti-football, very much a Sam Allardyce, David Moyes, your favorite manager in the world, ex-Burnley manager Sean Dyche, those guys. But that's anti-football. What Mourinho does is more of a, I'm going to defend, I'm going to defend, I'm going to defend, but when I have the ball, I want to keep it. Umama trying to run and kick, and it turns out he's the one who is kicked there. Sanchez swiftly hit over to the far side. Caveda will try that way. His ball in. Sanchez retrieves. Now 15 minutes through. Cortez. Half-hearted ball, Cortez. He's trying to get away from danger in it. Ricochets off Pedro Milani and out for a throw. Makila bending and breaking through midfield. Slightly too heavy, but it's another instance in which he's been able to wriggle around in a tight area and create some space, and it turns out he's fouled. Melissa Back makes the ruling a decorated official and certainly one we're happy to have presiding over this match. It's a level that she is a good center at for, and it's, it's kind of perfect to see someone who's been doing AR work at the professional game sliding into these moments. and. Should be certainly a level-headed, clear leader of the officiating crew today. We're up, communicating to his defense. Ducks in a row as the ball plunges in from Thon Thuong. Flag was up anyway. That is the threat pose on any type of dead ball delivery from Prairie State, though so many tall players and not only are they tall but they're good and they're aware of how tall they are and they're able to find the space that's perfect and attack it Rosito, that's a hard challenge and now it's starting to simmer Escalante, who put his side here today. That wonderfully taken outside of the boot finish. An extra time to dispatch Phoenix College. Rather, I should say, CCBC Essex. Those matches bleeding into each other in our mind. It's been a long week. 15 games for you, 15 for me, 30 in total. Men's and women's. This is the last one, 30 of 30. 34 30. Math is hard as is that tackle, but it's a fair one. Quick switch of play. And you're willing to sacrifice possession to maybe have a couple of those rips to the opposite end for Agbuku, Joffrey. Yeah, take your chances with him, right? Get the opportunity going and get him in space. That's the big deal is if you can find a way to get him the ball, you've got a lot better of an opportunity to be dangerous. Well, Cito. On the prowl, 
And Bumama wisely pivots back. That's a great switch of the ball. Sanchez strolling forward. And there is the foul. Shin guard sent spiraling from both legs from Bumama, who likes to wear his socks a little lower. Very Jack Grealish like in that. And I hate people who wear low socks. <laughs> really? I guess that's what people are learning today, is I just hate things. Why, well, miser? 18 minutes, yeah. A what? Miser? Miser? Like heat miser? Like snow miser? I like how we thought of the same thing, but the different yeah. versions of each thing. No, exactly. It's what it's known for. Have you ever seen a player lose both shin pads in a tackle? Yes. I have before. I'd like to hear that story after the free kick. Yeah, sure. Pedro Milani. It's a decent hit. Mijaljevic stymies it, takes a sting out. Okay, so what is the story of that Ryan Sequoia great. losing both shin pads? That was a great ball from Mijaljevic. Just too late of a run and puts it too far out in front. So, um... Let's say it this. I did lose one shin guard. And, and then, and then, and then, and I'll, I'll keep this one quiet because the referee still doesn't know. I tossed the other shin guard. I just kind of picked it up and threw it out. You have to sell it a little bit. We talked about this yesterday, I think, on the men's game. Stark arts are one of the few things I was elite at as a player. Probably the only thing I was elite at. <laughs> Kamli Mirjaljevic he does make a habit of making someone nervy moments look routine. A calmness beyond his years, some might say. Buku skimming off his follicles and Marrera. Struggled with it for a moment. Anything but calm. He is a very good goalkeeper, but sometimes maybe a little bit less than pristine with his feet. Two very different types of keepers as well. Marrera, that acrobatic shot stopper, that palpitating kind of player that a lot of fans will glom onto. Mirjaljevic in control, confident in and around the box. Very good in distribution. Okuma, fresh into the match and fit and firing. Out for a goal kick, though. Okuma's an interesting figure within this team. We've seen him up top as a secondary striker next to Silverio. Yesterday we saw him at the right side of a back three when they were chasing the game. He's versatile, and that's kind of the best thing about a lot of the kids at this level is they're just going to go out there and play wherever you tell them to play because they're the best players. And they're the players that you're going to need to put wherever you need to fix something, wherever you need the control of the game. Like this guy, Dutra. Ekbuku, Geoffrey. Still whittling away. Makila, the joy of this sport. Nothing more than that. So many of them willing to just do whatever is asked of them to go out and continue to compete. They just want to play. It's the best way to describe it. They just want to play, always. It's a mentality that's embodied by the manager on the far touch line, Juan Franco, in his 24th season with Morton. Someone who just savors the nectar of life, always smiling. We talked to him about, you know, seeds and rivalries and all these through lines that we like to try and get quotes from. And he just says it's two teams playing a great sport that we all love. And I'm just going to try and go do my job, put my kids in the best position. Here's Thun Thwong. Gujiri. Trying to carve out that half yard he needs. He thirsts for but he doesn't. And now it's Okuma with green grass in front and the green shirt of Dutra as well. He is a sentinel of a six. It's just a tank. Can put patrols and controls and dominates games. He's got the same kind of artillery as one as well with two goals in the tournament. One of them a long goal against Phoenix College yesterday that put 
Prairie State up 1-0, a crucial one that allowed them to defend for the majority of the match. And those are the best kinds of game. Those are the best kinds of six, the ones that can pop up and win you a game through, a one, through one effort. And think about Rodri players like that. That's an excellent comparison. And you and I have had that debate before about Rodri, and that's an element that he adds that a lot of other guys at his position don't add. You think about Casemiro, Sergio Busquets, different players at that number six role in Golocante that don't always have the, the additive influence of goals to their game, and even Conte, not a true six, but a destroyer, much like Dutra is, but he doesn't even have a lot of goals to his game. On the season now for Dutra, his ninth scored in the last match. Only one assist, but that's not what he's there for. Most sixes viewed as purely support players to aid in the attacking pursuits of the more flashy wingers and strikers and number tens. Then he does stuff here like step out wide into a fullback role and just allow Tan Thuong to get further up the pitch and their rotations are key as well because he drives into the middle much more technical, much more tidy as a dribbler. They can do different things. Striding in, amazing run from Martinez. Mazzario with Tan Thuong making himself available down the line. Both defenders rushing back as Morton comes away with possession. Travelled forward, Arizman Diz, Mitrosito, and takes him down. Tucking in a knee as Rosito tried to bend around him and keep it in. And just a talking to from Melissa Beck, you would think, this early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Beck will certainly be aware, maybe not. Sometimes referees don't like to be made aware of rivalries. They want to come in fresh and clean and Depends on what Melissa Beck wants to be in this game. If she's aware that they're playing, then she'll be heightened to the fact that she has to referee the game a little differently, but you don't have to be. You can also referee it the same way you would any game, treat it like anything else. I was a ref who very much was never interested in knowing who you were, where you're from. It was blue team, green team, white team, purple team. It didn't matter. Almost like a blind taste test. Yeah, you've seen those TikToks where the uh, the people claim they can tell Diet Coke from Coke from Coke Zero. It's kind of like that. You always are wanting to figure it out without knowing what you're looking at. Read the game as it's happening. Figure out what you're doing as you taste the game, right? As you're seeing every moment come in, every sip of what's happening. Back trying to drink it in now, but Maurice Mendes down and injured, a player that's carried a couple knocks with him throughout the tournament and got it out, performance after performance, finding a way with a night's rest to restore himself enough to continue playing, but we need to be tended to here. You have to think for a lot of these players for Prairie State who are of a short benched variety here, not able to bring yeah. their full roster down with them here to Tucson. They're just going to keep fighting, and that's been their mentality throughout this tournament as they've been able to, with grit, and really just grit, get to this stage, the touches of quality where they need it. Five or six subs is not often enough to stay fit at this level, especially when you're Prairie State coming off a game like you did last night, going to a shootout, grinding it out, 110 minutes plus, and got to keep the fluids in. You got to find ways to... Get Gatorade, get water, get a stretch in every once in a while. Keep the legs hot and warm and ready. Jose Rico, who scored the winning penalty in the shootout yesterday, in to fill in now for Riz Mendes. <laughs> the bobbing bun of Bashir Bubama. Reintroduced. There's a lot of bees. Four? Like the beam. Like the beam, my friend. Sacramento Kings. Look it up if you're unaware, please. It's a good meme. Quality content. Sanchez across midfield. Makia thrusting himself into the mix. Solid in possession, though. The Panthers. 
Yet to really show their claws so far. So Vario a chance to hold on for Okuma. That's brilliantly done and Okuma strikes it towards Marjolyevic. Just bats it down, his heels on the chalk of the goal line. Undaunted, unfazed, not a dent in that confidence. And it's a good move from Morton to create that opportunity. Okuma, maybe not the best time to take that shot, but you have the space, you have the ability to go and deliver it, you might as well. Pressing now for the first real time we've seen. A player paying the price for that effort. At first glance, it looks like Escalante, who has two goals in the tournament, one in the first match, and then again, one to win it yesterday. Should be said that in the first match of this tournament for these Panthers, Escalante was injured early and couldn't return. Two teams coming in, battered and bruised, just fighting to the finish line, knowing that they're 90 minutes and now less than that away from lifting a national title and making it all worth it. That said, the rest patterns are an interesting thing to point out. Prey State, you think it's a lower seed disadvantage. You don't get the off day in between games in the group stage, but not expecting to maybe make a run like this. They got two days off yeah. before the knockout play began. So they did play yesterday and they did go to penalties, but maybe a little bit more rested. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I think this late on in the tournament, that rest doesn't mean as much. You're kind of both running off fumes. That being said, we did watch a game today where Holmes played Phoenix College, and I do think the openness of that game cost a very tired Holmes team that had played in two overtime games, almost gone to two shootouts, and a PC team that was very fresh, very fleet-footed. It kind of got away from the Holmes Bulldogs at some point. This game should be a lot closer, a lot less on the ropes, if you will, and I think at this point both teams running off their fumes and kind of just going off emotion and, and pure mental grit. It'll mean the same thing at the end. That is something that Coach Juan Franco said to us. He said, yeah, we're just really tired. At this point, we'd like to go home, but we're here for what we came for. He's just a ray of joy, Juan Franco. Always pleasant to talk to him. Someone who's devoted 24 years of his life to these ranks here in junior college. It's a long time, but it's awesome. It's what it's about in a lot of ways. Guys like Franco are leading programs and building up human beings that are local, trying to figure their way out and through life and may not always have the greatest resources at their disposal to do that. This is an opportunity for them to further their education, further their ability to play at a two-year university like Morton. Make the friendships, too, that come with it. Oh, yeah. That's what's been so evident to me throughout this tournament is Mastic's on and chasing the ball how much it really matters to these teams. You see it especially after defeat. It's Morton trying to wrap around the back. A lot of players, their journeys coming to the close and maybe the close of their career at that. And in many ways, it's the friendships are heightened because it's a smaller team. It's a smaller university as well. You're only there for two years. You're not playing with guys that are four years older than you, that are guys that are born almost in some cases, a different century than you in a lot of ways. With You look at stuff like that, it's kind of crazy, and you think about stuff like that. There's guys that are a year apart, two years apart, that may have played together for a long time and will continue to play together after this time period. They'll go on to a four-year university and play with each other. A little dust up there. Dutra puts an end to any good love and feeling up here in the booth. Spikes the ball, and I was waiting on the card. There it is. Falcon as he tangled with Bumama. First yellow of the match. Ryojovic. Stands the detention and grabs it out of the sky. It's important to track on Dutra, him getting the yellow more so than maybe some other players as he'll be involved in more than one scrape throughout the match. You never want your six to pick up a, a caution 25, 28 minutes into the game. It's never a good sign. 
See if it hinders his aggression at all. Slicing pass, cutting across this well-kept pitch here. I think, you know, Sports Complex has held up this ground very well considering the amount of use. Almost too well. I mean, we had 4, 8, 12, 16, and now what is it going to be? 18 games throughout the week on this field. 18 games in six days, three a day. If you do the math, there was a day off, obviously, for keeping it but and for rest for the players, but... 12, Still impressive. 12 during the, the group stage play, and then another four yesterday and two today. That's up to 18, so you just had to show your work there. I appreciate it. I was trying to not show my work to see if I could do it all in my head, but honestly, it's great. Shake of the hand for that. Gold star. Game has kind of not buried itself to a stop or a halt, but certainly has died down after maybe a three or four minute stretch period where it was wide open. It has come back to this tense and tidy possession-based game where either team is looking to control it for long periods. Maybe looking to do something about that now. Prairie State with a corner. And they're going to make sure to crowd the 5'10 goalkeeper, Marrera. High angle ball. Graf bounced up for it. All said and done, it's out for a Prairie State throw. And Buku, Geoffrey on the bench. In that big moment where he could have been useful. Reisman, is also there as well. So primary attackers out of play. But here's Mastic. Marrera stones him away. But first, a whistle. It was a throw in. Maybe an illegal throw. Somebody lifting the leg up. Murrah poking wide. Pedro Milani pressed down by Mazzario. That's beautifully done from Prairie State, even if it doesn't yield the ball. Gosh, and Diego Rodriguez was open for the entirety of that passage to play. Took too long to get it over there. Took too long to even think about trying to get it to him. He has it now, though. Pedro Milani. And right to the chest of Rosito. Will relish the opportunity to jive forward. Silverio. Ain't clear. Rosito, that danger man, combustible in every sense of the word. Can also be quite the frustrator as well. Bumama checks his shoulders. Sanchez, driven switch left behind Caveda. Caveda dashing by Jose Rico. Now Rosito. Here he is again. Here he is again, Rosito. Silverio staggered forward and blocked. Akuma miss hit it. Such good play in the tight areas from both Silverio and Rosito, but no cigar. Wonderful feet. Really clean, really perfect, but everything but the finish. And Rosito goes down not even really a bit too easily. Just has a really good run, a really good tackle, really timed well. and Also a good no call from Melissa Beck. Bumama pressing now. Both teams don't hang their hat on the press, but in spurts in the right moments, so they'll gladly do it. And do it well in this case. Forward immediately. You're crying for them to get direct whenever the ball is won there. Well, when the right run is made, it's a perfect run from McGlory Makila. And the dummy step over on the far side was just not the right decision there. Just play diagonal in across where the ball came from. Serials cross, Rico waiting on it. Never gets there, Dutra. 
Misjudged it, and now we'll try to make up for it. Bumama. Excelling forward now, Akuma. What a tackle, Garcia. But a foul. And it was an earlier infringement. The advantage was played there. But a foul. And it was an earlier infringement. The advantage was played there. Or rather, actually, a throw in, excuse me. That was foolish. And now a corner. Buku Geoffrey getting final words as he comes to the touchline, sets the check back in. Bumama. Hurled in, Okuma oh, Mirjajevic at the upper 90, turns it away the hardest spot to get to as a goalkeeper, but he does. It's a great save. He gets across perfectly. Fantastic. It's a fantastic save. He's not been tested a ton in net throughout this tournament, really just affecting the match, coming to claim aerial balls like this one. Steps up in a big way there, though. Spun to the other ends. And really, sometimes that's all you need. A couple figurehead players, some physically imposing players, some grit, some guile, and a great Experience. shot stopper. Experience. Strong, confident players back there that can lead your group. Probably the most important one, honestly. It's probably a lot of the reasons. That said, can't imagine a lower seed would threaten for it for quite some time. 11 out of 12 selected to come and compete here. Leonardo has been tapped. He'll make entry. Spell Silverio and Geoffrey trots in with broad shoulders and Bad intentions. Certainly the latter and the, actually both of them. Bad intentions more so even maybe, and he does indeed carry broad shoulders. Not sure if when he moves the ground quakes because he's big or because it's afraid of him. Thong Thuong. And Dutra skipped in and scooted away. Center defenders on both teams have really performed well. Garcia, Martinez, Sanchez, Cortez. Both players playing in a four-man back line. Geoffrey ripped out. That's the other thing he can add is that physicality, that level where you don't have to always be in play, but he can win free kicks. It's sometimes hard to call fouls on big guys. We talked about that last night a little bit. But when you do call a foul on a big guy, it's mostly because of their size and how hard it is to bring them down. So when you do, it's almost like kind of had to be one, I feel like. This particular routine, all players lining up on the right side of the box. The wind blowing in that direction now. Looks like Mazzario, who traditionally sets up on the right side, will put it in an in-swinging ball. Gets it up, gets it over, Dutra. Couldn't put it on target, and now a goal kick. Great service. Great service in there, and they're creating chances, Prairie State. But I don't think dominating possession as much so as Morton is, and certainly not after the way they started where they were both controlling their own tempo as well. I think Morton has certainly outlasted them on that track on that track and now Prairie started have Prairie State are having to change their game just a little bit. 
Sanchez now pressed down by two. Calmly through midfield. Dutra trying to get the blood pressure up, but Bumama, unflappable. He fights forward. Rosito. Flamingoing with the ball, foraying forward. Flashed in towards Okuma. Mastic with some defensive work, and now Mazzario. Buku gets going down the line. And he just rolls it out. How quickly they converge, those three players on top of him, sensing the threat. It's just elite pressure, and as soon as he picks up the ball, you're on him immediately. Has that been the key word so far in this half for both teams? Swarming? Elite pressure. Elite pressure. I guess that's two. I was going to say. I'm trying to think of one. And great job by Rosito to turn the edge. And he is going to have his cross blocked out. I think the, the key word is possession. and doesn't seem like it would make a lot of sense with a game that hasn't necessarily had a passive, a passion, a moment of possession, we'll go with that, I guess, that has lasted longer than maybe 10 or 15 passes, but those moments when they've came, they've been dominant and they've, they've created opportunities. Morton have had more chances because they've had more possession, and part of possession is pressuring the ball. I will give you that one, and I will agree with you on that one as well. Bicycle attempt from several players, and now another overheaded kick, and a clearance from Rico. Makia swerving a ball in towards Barrera. No real intent there, but it draws the approval. And Carlos Reyes certainly fond of the directness there. That's what you need to do, and it's finding that space and understanding the moments when you need to exploit it, which is almost every moment, I guess, when you're looking at Prairie State. on nine passes in a row without breaking across midfield and now they do Rosito feathered forward Milani Caveda now inverted and in an uncomfortable spot as he loses the ball and worked wisely wide Mazzario charging back to meet him is Rodriguez Mazzario has him on a plate his cross is blocked though Don Thuong chipped down line See more Tiki Taka type build from Morton. They look very comfortable right now. It's where the game has played its way out. 42 minutes in, and Perry State very comfortable to sit across and sit off. It's allowed Morton to have more possession, have more of the ball, be more careful and calculated, and take more long standing possessions and try and break you down that way. Morton have worn white in three of the four matches in this tournament. And that white shirt of Miguel Fiquero has not been silly much. He's not played hardly at all, but he's set to check in. Five-five freshman attending the ITW David Spear Academy. Set to get some of his first real taste of this. And JCAA National Championship. Thank you for joining us here on the NJCA Network. Peyton Geller, Ryan Sakura, and the call. And Ryan, with something to say? The ITW David Spear Academy? We'll get the research team on it. Sounds fancy. Makia. Bumama always making sure to check his surroundings. See that twitch of the head one way and another right before he receives the ball always. Just careful. It's it's what it's what a center it's what a center midfielder should do. Looking, glancing, observing, scanning is kind of the proper term for it. Always being aware of where you are and where everybody else is. That's what a good holding midfielder will do. Garcia on his horse. 
shielding off Rodriguez and doing so with some conviction at the end. Back to Mumama. That head movement always accentuated by his hairdo. The coiffure kind of gives him away. Carroll into the match now. Setting up in the attacking positions. Receiving some instruction from Leonardo, the captain who comes off the bench. Real honor for him to wear the armband even though he's not a central player in this team. With just more than a minute left, maybe a chance to breathe some life into the match. For Morton, it's not been on life support per se, but certainly not with his blood in full flow. Pumama scorching forward and digging a ball. Not beyond Thong Thuong. Miserial now. That left side just so hard to penetrate with Thong Thuong and Miserial. Rico, that's a clean tackle. Rosito summoned to get up. Makia right on the hip and nipping at the heels of Sanchez. His side have a throw. His side don't have the ball though, however, as they rush to get it back in play. Clock running at 15 seconds now. Mateus Milani. Flung forward, Rodriguez. He's got five seconds. Got to get it in. His shot. Marijovic not going to be faced there. And that is a half, and it's scoreless. These two teams, they know each other so well, and it feels like they figured each other out. Yeah, but at the same time, it feels like there's a new problem to solve, a new puzzle to fix, and who can put the pieces together first? That's the big question. And for Morton, they haven't had to put the pieces together first, but often they've been the team to put the last piece on. It's kind of been their story this tournament, but right now they seem on the front foot kind of considerably. And I don't know if that will translate into the second half. This break might not be great for them. Obviously, both teams get a rest, but it gives Carlos Reyes a chance to sit down, retool, regroup, and get his group back on the same page and figure out how they want to attack the second half. We will put the pieces together here in this national championship. We will find out. You are watching the NJCAA Network presented by Zurich Insurance, the official provider of student-athlete insurance for the NJCAA. Zurich Insurance helps athletes get back on the field after an injury. Learn more at Zurich-N-A.com. We will talk to you soon. Much more to uncover in the second half. Without a goal, without a margin. After 45 here on the NJCA Network. The national title. Morton Panthers, the four seed, the 11 seed. A national title to be claimed. The end of this 45 minutes or maybe beyond that. Two teams out of the same conference and out of the same general area. The Chicagoland area. I mean, the 26-hour transit that travel across the country to see each other on this field in Tucson and so far no separation far from a breathless first half Ryan but still an intriguing one that will lead into a second half full of intrigue I mean it was slow it was patient it was methodical but it was tactical they were doing different things trying out different formations decisions personnel where to put that personnel each team for Morton it's all about stopping Magbuku Joffrey and for Prairie State, it's just about sitting in and making sure you can't create chances. You can't allow the other team to create chances, rather. Sox Sports is proud to be the official match ball of the National Junior College Athletic Association. Select Super FIFA match ball is used exclusively at all NJCAA soccer championships. Select Sport, inspired by history but designed for the future. And what might that future hold? We will find out. Peyton Gallagher, Ryan Sakura, the NJCAA Network. Men's Division II National Championship, and here's a magic man, Rosito, and a great pass forward to Bumama, who likes to fancy these type of shots, and flung far from the target. <laughs> he won't stop shooting, though, I promise. No, he's a vibes guy. He's a good vibes guy, and a good guy to have with his technical ability as well, and also his willingness to do other things. He's spent a lot of this half doing dirty work, that first half doing dirty work, and when given the chance to go, he certainly will. How many species of Vibes guys are there? Huh? How many different Vibes guys are there? Mm. Different breeds, different varieties? Get back to me on that. 
We'll check in in about 10 minutes, okay? Okay. Caveda, sturdy at the back and striding forward. Let's that linger over the near line, though. Dylan Hawley, a walking boot and on crutches after a really strong start to this tournament at the back. Manders over to try and cry his team forward. Geoffrey. And may have made contact with a trailing hand to Pedro Milani. A yellow card to Geoffrey. Center official was right there, so able to see it cleanly. And I don't think she shows the yellow card unless she's certain that there was contact made. You see anything there? He swings the elbow, makes contact, and that's what Melissa Beck is signaling, that elbow coming out and moving in. It's a point in the game where a yellow card early in the second half is probably okay, it's useful. Kind of a tone setter. Correct. Leonardo, it's the second Prairie State player to be booked so far. Leo Dutra got one about 20 minutes in, a warning. Milani, a strong tackle there. <laughs> Dumped out. Sun starting the set. Temperature will fall with it, but not the intensity of this one. Can't get it clear. Jovic will juggle it to his grateful grasp. I wonder why he does that, if it's to show off, to express himself, maybe to just frustrate the opponent. To show off. I like it. I don't mind it. I don't mind a keeper that wants to show he's a little bit cocky or a little bit more confident in his abilities. Bumama's touch was almost too good at the first blush there. He's able to work it over to Rodriguez who now cuts in and makes an incisive pass forward to Milani. Now Rosito. Rosito crossing in with his left foot. Bounding away into the corner of Misario. Swoops in. Thantuang. And Bumama. Two of the starlets of this competition. Battling for the ball and swung by the side wearing green. What is the most exciting thing for you about Moon Thantuang? His ability to get back. It's it's for an attacking fullback as myself and Certainly is what Moon Thang Thuong believes he is as well. Getting forward is so important, but he tracks back well. He gets in, he gets the moments, where to go, when to not, when to sit. He, he just understands the position well and what his role in this system is, which is the sign of a smart player and a good fullback. He has to watch on there, though, as Geoffrey gives it away. Again, doing a good job. Morton swarming to him, hunting in packs. Umama. Rodriguez clattered into, shut down, and Makila must hold his temper in check as he's unhappy with the ruling. Cool kick. Now, a few more bodies committed to pressing. Takeda, who ended the last half, will start this one after, again, rare duty throughout this tournament so far. Can't say for certain he's not played, but I can't remember if he has. It's now the fourth match for Morton. 
He plays a smart ball there to Rosito. Morton now on the front foot. And they find themselves sharp enough to poke through. Punch ahead as they've so rarely been in this tournament. Milani charging up to join the attacking line, provide his 6-2 frame. I scored the goal against CC BC Essex. Foul assessed against Pedro Milani there. Scooting through midfield and skip forward. Buku Geoffrey over rather easily there. Van Thuang makes himself available once more down the line. Instead, Miserial drives into the box as Geoffrey charged up and tried to swing at it. Never made it to him. Van Thuang untangling himself and now Looking for options, finding Gujiri and Dutra. Gujiri stepped in front of by Cortez. Graf. Makia arriving. Tried to back heel it to someone who was not there. Rosito. Stymied by Jose Rico. Vaquero digs in again. And he's been a surprising little fire plug. Yeah. It, it, there's the reasons he's here, I believe, mostly because of that energy he can bring. And I think perhaps the reason he feels, I mean, Peyton, you feel that you can't remember if he's played or if he hasn't is because many of his appearances may have been immemorable. He hasn't had the opportunity to go in and be that fire spark. Today he does against a rival opponent. This belabored Morton team that's had to fight so hard and play so many minutes to get here. And he's just also trying to dig into the bench as Dutra is brought down by Milani. To try and provide some kind of reserve of energy to allow those starting players to recharge. A yellow card was shown there. Ryan, by your count, Cavedo, the man booked. Dutra still obviously feeling it. You wonder the big question with both these teams having played so many late games and having played for so long, who loses their legs first? Whichever team does that, the possession starts to wane and then the game becomes more open. And if you're open, and you don't have the legs, you've got really no chance of surviving. You've got to stay in it as long as you possibly can. A team who has more possession is less likely to be tired, and right now Morton have had more of that. Fikero exiting to boisterous applause from those who have made the trip in support on the side in orange and blue. Silverio, lead man in the bands, back on to lead the line. Not a lot of players have scored multiple goals on the men's side of this tournament as Dutra is one of those players and looks fit to continue. So Vario with a pair as well. Escalante with two who we've not seen involved much in this match. Picked up that injury earlier. Morero watching it glide to his grip. By my view, Escalante still has not returned to this match. Rosito hugging the near touch line as the ball works away from him. And Petro Milani jolts forward. Bumama making himself 
an easy target to find and now whipping wide. Zerial closing the space as they work down the line. So very all. Very different hold up nine to Geoffrey, but still a hold up nine. Here's his counterpart. Now tilts the field to the right side. Masario. Gujiri Masario looks off Thon Thuong and now picks him out. Fullbacks cross is blocked out. And somehow stays in play. will be a throw from as deep in the corner as you can go. Tan Thuong does have the power to get it into the box though. Instead picks out Gujiri. And once more. Able to win the ball as well. How does this game get broken open? In a lot of ways that most of the men's games have been broken. Through a moment of quality, a moment of brilliance. Escalante's winner yesterday, something along those lines. One of the great finishes that Bashir Bumama has had. Maybe a run like this from Jose Rico. Caveda stepping back in. Has the dullness of the men's bracket been because of uh, quality defense on a lot of these teams, or is it a lack of quality? What's it been? We've seen so many fireworks on the women's side. It's just more even at the end of the day. I think Phoenix College was so far ahead of everybody else in that women's field that it had to make games more open because you had to go and try and chase. And these games, they've never really had a team that's had to chase. They've had... Maybe brief moments. I, I can guarantee you probably the most open game you saw was the game where Phoenix College jumped out to a 2-0 lead early and Morton climbed back in. And then after it got to 3-2, all in the first half, what, there were no more goals, yes? Yeah, there has been no team in this tournament so far on the men's side to score more than three goals in a game. And that was five goals the most by any two participants by far. All in the first half, though, is what I'm saying. Correct. correct? So it yes. was 2-0, then 3-2. It was very open as they tried to climb their way back in. Phoenix College had to chase. They were always going to give up goals, and then kind of when it became 3-2, it became a trip too far to go for PC, and, or Pima College, I guess, not Phoenix College. But Pima, that game kind of turned into a, a doldrum in the second half. There's just not as many teams that are trying to chase or trying to push the emphasis and make the game open in the men's side right now because they all feel like they have a chance. It's closer levels of competition. It's much more tense and much more quiet. Silverio now gripping his hand after that free kick was not very troublesome for Marrera. Javier Figueroa set the check in. Yeah, you look at the journeys of these teams, you know, Prairie State, 2-0, then you lose 2-1, 1-1 really against Phoenix College and then winning penalties. Little bit more offensive flair from Morton so far in the tournament. 2-1 extra time winners on the first day of the group. And of course that thrilling 3-2 and what we saw last night, their 2-1 win over CCBC Essex with the late heroics as they've become so accustomed. But <laughs> aside from just the drama that Morton had provided, the attacking festival of football that we would have hoped for has been absent. It's been a pretty quiet party. Tame. Some might call it a kickback. Not an approval. This is yet to yield, but you also would say that in this final, if a team does find a goal, this thing will open up quickly. One team trying to sit, the other team trying to press with stark rules to find at that point. Graf let it go. You think we find a goal in the next 30 minutes? Yeah. For some reason I do, and it, I think it's because I think Morton has that moment in them. I think we've seen it enough. I, I'm not sure if there's enough there for Prairie State to find that moment, but I do think Morton will certainly have enough quality. 
come be it at the end, but it will be tight. And it will be the tightest of the three games they've now played so far, just as I think it already has been through the first 60 minutes. Shift wide. Out for a throw. Of course, without Escalante, the attacking power cut down a little bit. He's an important player, a crater out of midfield. A throw coming for Prairie State. Pumama charging and chasing and clear from him. The shape starting to drift a little bit more now. Dutra in trouble as he's hounded. 15 minutes into the second half. Buku down but told to play on. Now multiple players injured. Looks like Rodriguez tripped over Geoffrey after the big man already fell. Drop ball. Kaveda. Makila in front of him. Figueroa fails to settle. Rosito, Silverio, back up and back in it. Wild graph again. Some quality defending. Geoffrey's back heel and Miserial's advance and Milani's foul. Serial, Moon shot at the graph, Rosito, hot on his heels. Stuck away by Caveda. This has been the sleepiest patches of play in the match so far. It's been frankly dull, and I think that's exactly how Carlos Reyes wants it to be. Rico, Geoffrey, Milani just snatched it from him. And Rosito out with Dutra, plays down line, Silverio running as hard as he can to keep it on as the ball stayed in for quite some time, but rolled away from him at last. Prairie State team in the midst of the deepest run of any team on the campus's history. They already accomplished that by making it to the semifinal. Now with a chance to put the first bit of silverware in that cabinet back in Chicago Heights. Rosito, Pedro Milani taking space and taking his time to find a way past Dutra. And it's in the form of Rosito whose cross is on the ground. And out of the box. Caveda. 
Cushioned down well by Milani and walked across the line by Kujiri. Figueroa. Caveda. Dutra can't get it away. Geoffrey is all the way back now in defense. She flies forward. Rosito. Pumama on flat feet. And now Geoffrey to the other end. He will win this ball. Or maybe he won't. It looks certain that it would fall to his feet as he got the better angle on Cortez, but well covered by Caveda. Great throw. Rico trying to be the hero again there. Martinez stepping forward, Makila. Lofting a ball now, Mazzario. Goal kick. How do you break out of the sleep now? That's the, kind of the big question. If Prairie State falls to sleep first, Morton can break them and vice versa. There is a simple patience to this game right now and not saying that needs to be broken, but we do need a little bit of variance, that little bit of mercurialism from guys like Bumama, guys like Rosito for Morton, guys like Dutra who's about to touch the ball here for Prairie State. Knowing Morton's track record, they're about to fall behind, equalize, fall behind again, equalize again, <laughs> and then win 3-2 in the 90, 90th minute, or maybe even beyond that. They got the dudes to break that streak though. They have the variance in them. They've got the different types of quality players. Pause to say 90th minute because they've got such a knack to win in even the extra time periods. Find that golden goal. Here's Makila. Well shielded by Caveda who exclaims his excitement as Marrera came to it. There's almost a practice feel to this right now. It's like warming up in a lot of ways. Yeah, the practice feel is good. I mean, side to side movements, pressures at the right moment. Not enough risk being taken. I think that's a key point of this stage. Two teams that know each other so well, know not only the team tendencies, but the individual players as well. No one's been able to shake it up enough to maybe surprise the opponent. Joffrey, working wide first time and with his power and prowess, overpowered that ball to the wide area. Buka curving in, and again, it's Cortez that has the better of that matchup. He's been excellent so far. I don't know where it comes from halfway through the second half, but someone has to have something here at the death. Someone in 20 minutes has to be able to decide this. I'm certain of it. Someone in 20 minutes has to be able to decide this. I'm certain of it. Rosito clatters in and right in front of the Panther bench. It's a yellow card, and that is the second yellow card, and maybe that's what opens it up. Geoffrey is off, and Prairie State, if they are to do this, will do it with 10 men.
Right. You appear to be totally shocked. Maybe something happening there Intrigued. that we couldn't see as the Morton bench reacted so strongly to that instance. Yeah, more so intrigued than shocked. I, I don't know what exactly 100% has gone on. Let's see if we can take another look here. That was right after it happened. Here is that. That instance. is rash. It is. Mm. Just comes in, sticks a leg out. Studs right in the up. worst place to do it. Studs it up, but it also looks as if he's catching him off the top of the boot anyway to begin with. It's just almost a, a kick out more than a kick down where the studs can really be affected. I think it's a yellow card. A second yellow card? A yellow or card is a matter? yellow card. It should not matter. No, no, no. A yellow card is a yellow card in any instance. It's like a penalty. It's like a penalty kick. If it's a foul at midfield, it's a foul in the box. Nothing changes based on position or scenario. Especially if it's severe enough to be a yellow card on its own. And in that moment, sensing the opportunity, Escalante will come back on now. Maybe they felt like they couldn't afford to have Luis Escalante on the pitch. A luxury player for them and a match winner, but you can't always have match winners if he can cost you something in terms of holding up the play. Dutra should get further forward as he is now, though. It'll be a lot more Dutra, a lot more Makia. A lot more of this man, Miserio. And it's a well-worked back post cross, but nobody's there waiting. Makila slides in and clips it away. Escalante back on. A couple more changes for Prairie State as well. I bet you Prairie State's energy rises up now down a man, though. And that's the scary part for Morton. You're up a man. You're able to put back your, your luxury player in Luis Escalante. You're number 10 back on the pitch. But Prairie State will grind. They will not stop working. And their system already favors dropping deep anyway. Now they're going to hunker further into that system down a man. They've got McKee up top, who's dynamic. Now he's a little bit more free. Now Thong Thuong will come to the near side as well to play fullback. And it does look, Ryan, like Makila is going to function as that pseudo striker with Mastic in behind him. Tough, though, for Prairie State, who really rely on the big number nine to do everything for them in terms of their identity. Escalante driven hard and hit with conviction, but unable to put it on target in his first act back into the match. Mm -hmm. You go back to that crucial save from Rialjevic in the first half, keeping it out at the near post on a set piece. How much worse this could be to be down a man and down. Some guys will shrivel. Shepard it forward to Escalante and back to Milani. And Bumama will not stop it. Rosito. Settling away from Thon Thuong as Dutro retreats back in. Just not enough edge and energy to go forward fast right now for Morton. No, I mean, it's close yeah. though. Now they do. Silverio bouncing in front of him and bounding into the reach of Marjajevic who has words for Silverio as he passes by. You like that ball, though, yeah? It's it's the variance we've been asking for, the little wrinkle in the game that we've been looking for and searching. And you like that ball, though, yeah? It's it's the variance we've been asking for, the little wrinkle in the game that we've been looking for and searching. And and it comes. I think now the urgency up a man increases for Morton, who will certainly want to win this as soon as they possibly can. Mastic surging. He makes the most of a tackle, then wins it back and goes around his defender, Mastic in the caper! And down a man, up a goal! Mastic makes magic, it's 1-0! Where did that come from? Dumbfounding! Mistakes, mistakes at the back. That's, that's what it was, and maybe, maybe, the, the no call from Melissa Beck, but Pedro Milani, he certainly thinks that Mastic, wow, just kept the hustle going. Makia came in and made a challenge. Mastic made one. Everybody tumbling over, and 
unable to grab a hold of the Mastic in the area and just slotting it past Moreira. Now Morton will definitely have to push. This plays right into Prairie State's hands. That said, no team, no team in this tournament more suited to do what must be done than Morton. This game is about to get very open. Prayers being answered. There have only been three red cards in this whole tournament on the men's side. One shown in this match, two Prairie States lead man, Ekbuku Joffrey. He'll be without him trying to defend this lead. Which hurts because, yes, he's a forward, yes, he's a nine, but he's such a presence. Helps you defend as well. He'd be dropping in very deep right now. Bumama. Bumama again finding Milani. Mateus Milani flies over goal. Also without a reason Tees, who was strong at the beginning of this match as well. He's got a hoodie on. Was injured earlier as Bach through an apparent injury throughout the tournament. And Ryan, you are the official. When a player receives a red card, are they allowed to Stay on the benches, the goal scorer, Mastic with those cold muscles, needing a stretch as he came flying into the match. You're asking me about the red card, yes. If the players are allowed to stay on the bench, no. yes. No, he must leave the area. I believe he's hanging out just behind the, the concourse that we're in right now. The nice grandstand at the stadium field, and I think he's just kind of hanging out. I wonder what he's thinking if he knew that the loud roar that just came out of this place was for his team who scored without him now. I think he definitely Something's occurred, probably that something's happened. He might even be over there in the big huge barn we have just off where all the concessions and hospitality stuff has been this week. Mastic can't get this cramp situated. Hopefully it is a cramp at least as take a look back at his contribution to the match may have been fouled, maybe not. Still makes the most of it. Cortez, Marrera caught off guard. The man to make them pay. Number 17, Joshua Mastic. Okuma. This is what he does, launching a ball. Milani up for it. And clear. This is stunned silence for the Morton supporters. He certainly felt like that. Luis Escalante into the wall. Aquila wings out, but not before the ball struck his hand. At least that's what it looks like, but no, actually a throw here. Oh. Survival. That's all you can ask for now if you're Carlos Reyes. And if you do want that survival, you've got a goalkeeper that has been pretty good all week. Rialjevic has been kind of the guy to go to in need of a save. Certainly a man seasoned well in these types of situations. It's almost illegal how good he can be. He's just so good in great moments. Bumama flying in and Rialjevic. Sized it well, even if he did take a step too far. A menacing presence in all black and gold. Okuma. And now in that patented back three as they chase. That's where they've been best this week. Coming from behind. Silverio bundled into the defender Thon Thuong, and there is a foul. He's claiming that Thong Thuong initiated that contact and then fell over. No. <laughs> what? 
it's a hapless claim. You can see in his body language, he's saying, like a little chicken wing. That said, Silverio much longer and larger than Thun Thuong, and probably shouldn't be that disturbed by a chicken wing. Okuma dumps back in. Cortez, the one to grab it out of midfield, and Bumama. Cortez dips it in. Driving forward, huge tackle. And Sanchez will unearth there. It will be a throw. Sanchez really in pain. Not only will it be a throw, it will be a throw for the Pioneers. Yeah, it was a perfect tackle. A great tackle, well-timed, well-positioned, and it got everything you needed out of it. McKee is brought down. That's another easy foul call, though. And McKee will sell every bit of it, but it is a foul. He does wrap around in the ways, and... The clock is rolling as well. 10 minutes, 30 seconds now. How much more magic can Morton have? I say, cats have nine lives. Maybe that applies to the Panthers. We'll find out. Rosito, blustering breeze, maybe bringing with it that late equalizer for Morton. Don Thuong fighting forward, and now some unpleasant comments for certain given to Bumama. Yanks up those scrunch socks. Tick, 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 tick. Morton Every has to be second. very conscious about how much they foul now. Mm -hmm. Every second will matter, and eventually those fouls will lead the yellow cards, which will technically stop the clock, right? But has to be rash enough, brash enough to make that happen. But also yeah. every second ticks off. They'll take more time on their free kick process. Maybe a chance to counter here, though. Lucito retracting for it and giving it away. Traced well by Gujiri, who tries to bait another foul there. No cigar. Escalante, runners charging in. Milani tucked it away, but he was offside. And certainly so. The flag was up as soon as the ball was played. And watch how long they take. They gotta make sure they've got the right guy on this kick. Yeah, I mean, always. Right? So. So I know there's no real time for stories, but you got eight minutes. I think I received more yellow cards in my career for time wasting than I did for actual challenges. I was a master of just kind of dropping the ball. Is Silverio with maybe something more interesting as he comes on? Yeah, dropping the ball also in a actual playing sense. I could never do anything on the pitch. I always dropped the ball on the pitch. But when it was my turn to throw the ball in, it was. Reach up, go and grab it, and then, oh, nope, missed that throw. That's a great challenge. Rico. Cortez battling for it on the ground, and Melissa Beck gives a foul call to Prairie State, who will smile about it. Sand falling from the top to the bottom half of the hourglass and through the fingers of Morton. We've had every chance up a man, but now down a goal. Gujiri in. And it wasn't the worst effort as he whipped it. I'm not sure he meant to put it in the gloves of Marrero, but he did. Now Marrero blasts to the other end. Mateus Milani all but playing as a striker now. 
Rosito stocking forward. Thon Thuong, the one to take him away. Of course, actually that not being Thon Thuong, Julian Martinez covering into the wide area. Juan Sanchez off and into the game. Rosito coming out. Umama flat-footed. Real drama here. Severity. National title hanging in the balance and the team that is without one of their best players has a goal lead to the fans. That glanced off Bumama's hand, but in a natural position. Dutra digging towards the near touch line. Then running in to Okuma. It's a throw. Kojiri heads out. Approaching five minutes now. What's going through the Morton players' minds? There are two balls on the pitch. It's even more time wasted. What a ball that is, Bumama. Corner coming, Pedro Milani pinpoint and his pass forward and now he's gonna Make his way up into the box. Cortez, the short option. It won't happen again, will it? Not this time, Thump Thwong. This Morton team again has only had the lead for 50 minutes in this tournament. Not a single one today. Sanchez, rocketing. And wrong-footed. Silly. <laughs> Why? Why? And it really costs this team as they will take 30 seconds at least to play this ball out of the back. The clock was stopped, though, by Melissa Beck. I think understanding that. Akila, great first touch from him, Ariel. Tackled out for a throw. Start taking the ball into the corner. Every throw in should take 15 seconds. Every passage of play should take 20. Put it in the corner and waste 20 more. This has been a master class in the style of the game by Carlos Reyes' side. Find a way to get a goal and then find a way to take the absolute life out of the match. Yep. I mean, it's been tough. They've done a good job. 210 ticks of the clock away from a win. Okuma. Dutra. Masario. Makila using everything he's got to get to the ball. He wins a throw. Wow. Hundred eighty seconds left. Back for Morton. Rosito waiting, watching on. Okuma, a big ball, Marjojevic, an easy chest down, he makes sure to cover it up.
Rico. Okuma. Escalante. Milani gets it launched. Out for another throw, this time for Morton into the final minute 30. It's been a different man every time for the Panthers. Maybe it's Leonardo now checking on. Okuma, the one who exits, a lot of time coming off in that transgression. Don Thuong battling for it. Sanchez sliced in back post. Milani. Mission goal. Fantastic at every juncture. Great save, great save after great save. And before the game, as if almost juncture. Great save, great save after great save. And before the game, as if almost alluding to it, Juan Franco told us that he has lost games before in tournaments like this with 18 seconds left and his team almost went front to back and kept their season alive with 18 seconds left. Marjaljevic the only man in front of them that could make the stop. There will be frustration, there will be handshakes and there will be tears shed both of joy and of pain but wow if you told me the 11 seed would have won it at the beginning of this tournament everybody would have looked at you and laughed and I think